This is Russia, the biggest country in the world, and maybe we'll get a little bit bigger, just maybe. But the current size of Russia is cute when compared to its maximum size. Russia used to own Alaska at one point. So why on earth did Russia let go of Alaska, and gave its current arch-rival so much oil? Well, since the establishment of Kievan Rus, the Eastern Slavic people, who would later become Russians, were prone to invasions from the East, because geography. The only way for Russians to protect themselves is to expand eastwards to beat up their source of pain. After Moscow defeated their former Mongol overlords, the Russians began to expand. Russian Cossacks, basically Russian cowboys, expanded eastwards into Siberia over the Ural Mountains. Russians beat up the Sibir Khanate, leaving the vast wilderness of Siberia open for Russian exploration and colonization. The Russians reached the Pacific Ocean by the mid-17th century. Then, Russia crossed the Bering Sea into Alaska in the mid-18th century, establishing forts and towns, and engaging in the very profitable fur trade. Russian presence in the North American continent thus began. So how was life in Russian Alaska? Well, it was a typical colonial company, in which a royal chartered company made money by running the business, govern the towns, and handle the military. New Archangel was the capital of Russian Alaska, exerting Russian influence via religion, education, and economy. As per usual colonial arrangement, the Russians and Native Americans were in a love-hate relationship, working together to get furs, whilst getting into serious beefs occasionally. Due to Russian Alaska being too far away from the Russian heartland for supplies, some Russians decided to go south and explore California so to get better food supply for Alaska. Russia established Fort Ross in California, before selling it to a Swiss-American dude, because Russia knew that it could not defend Fort Ross against Mexico or United States. Russia also tried their hands in Hawaii, but got chased away. As such, Russian Alaska was all by itself, scrapping to survive. If that was not enough, the fur trade gradually diminished due to overhunting. The cost of maintaining Russian Alaska outweighs the profits. In addition, Alaska looked quite tasty for the ever-growing United States and British North America. Thus, it made perfect sense for Russia to sell Alaska. Russia pulled the trigger and sold Alaska to United States. Why United States? Because Russia still hated Britain for the Crimean War and the Great Game. Lucky for United States and unlucky for Russia, gold and later oil was discovered in Alaska. Alaska became a state within the United States, having this lady, and here we are today. The legacy of Russian Alaska can be seen in the Russian names on Alaskan towns and geographical features. Russian Orthodox Church continues to exist in Alaska, mainly attended by offspring of mixed Russians and Native Americans. If Alaska managed to remain a part of Russia today, it would likely be one of the richest oblasts due to oil revenues, making Russia even richer and stronger. Russian Alaska could easily be Americanized, tying itself closer to American influence, much like how Canada is more influenced by the United States than its father Britain nowadays, inevitably sowing seeds for independence, and we might see a legit independent Slavic state in North America. Conversely, if Russia did not expand into Alaska, Alaska will likely be a part of Canada today, because sooner or later some Brits will turn up in Alaska as part of its North American expansion. The lesson from Russia giving up on Alaska is, make sure your colony is making enough money to sustain itself, or otherwise someone else will take it. Thanks for watching.